everyone, today it's time for another Top 5 Wednesday. This week's topic are the top five books for your younger self and I am so excited about this topic. I mean, I say it all the time when I read something, I'm like, I wish I had this book when I was a teen. So this topic just really seems like the absolute perfect topic for me and I'm so excited to talk about these books. These are in no particular order, but the first one I wanna talk about is Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins. Now it's been a little while since I've read this, so I don't remember any specifics, but I do know that I really, really related to Lola. I think the way she dealt with heartbreak and just I mean I was certainly never as out there as Lola with you know my whole style but I just related to the way Lola behaved and the way she often subconsciously hid behind this out there style and out there personality. When this book came out or when I read this book, a lot of female YA protagonists would kind of be like quiet, a little bit like shy and just like, you know, they would really like, I, like, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I, And I don't want to hate on any of these people or on any of these protagonists, but it's just not something that I could ever relate to, especially in my teenage years. I would always be happy and loud and cheery and I would always be a little bit annoying, but that's just genuinely who I was. And even when I was sad or just going through bad phases, that was just how I would be when I was around people. And so seeing some of that portrayed in Lola, I love that. And it was like the first time I could really relate to a protagonist. And, you know, I was like 22 when I read this. So imagining reading this when I was an actual teen, I think it would have been really immensely helpful because like for a long time, I thought like I would have to be different. I would have to be like quiet. Yeah, I would just have to be like shy and everything for people to to like me and to accept me. And that's obviously very wrong. <laughs> but that's just what went through my head. And I think reading Lola at that time would have been hugely beneficial to my you know, self-confidence and everything. And also, this book doesn't deal with depression, but there are a couple of things in there about that. I'm hesitant to say this because, like, I would never recommend this as, like, depression, rap, or anything like that, but I just know that there were a couple of passages in here that would have been so important for me as a teen with understanding what I'm actually going through. And so, yeah, I really, really think I could have benefited from having this book when I was younger. Then I have Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I only read this a couple of months ago, but God, do I wish I had had this book like 10 years ago. It's so great when it comes to the mental health representation. It is so great when it comes to like the representation of being a very like online person and having online friends and how valid all of that is. This book just really takes the struggles of teens so serious and I really really would have needed that when I was a teen. It was so validating, like it validated online friendships and just kind of having an online life almost. It really validated that and I just love that and I really wish I had that. I know how beneficial the online friendships that I had were for me, but sometimes I would still like feel ridiculous about it or felt like I didn't have real friends and people were like constantly criticizing. I feel like having this book would have validated me as well and the way I was kind of, you know, living life basically. And also, as I said, like the mental health representation is really great. And I think it really would have helped me to learn more about myself and about my mental health struggles. This really could have changed my life, I feel like. So I wish I had this as a teen, but I'm still really glad I have this today. Then I also have Drumroll Please by Eliza Jen Bigelow. This is a middle grade novel that takes place at a music camp and the main character has feelings for another girl for the first time. She has some struggles with her best friend and God, this book, if I would have had this at like a middle grade age, that would have been hugely beneficial to me. And I'm not even sure if like I would have caught up on the queer aspect of it 
I'm not sure, I don't think so, quite honestly. But just this music camp, what this character learns in this music camp about confidence in herself, but also in her abilities. And then also the friendship aspect was really important to me as well in this book because I was really, really bad at keeping best friends when I was younger. I think I really would have loved to read about a girl who also has a fight with her best friend but seeing that that is not the end of the world and changes happening at different paces and how that influences friendship and that that doesn't mean that the friendship has to end. I really really appreciated that kind of representation and I really wish I had that when I was younger but yeah maybe it would have affected my queerness as well. I don't know. There were a lot of aspects about this book that I feel like I really would have needed when I was younger. Then I have The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertelli. Now this is another of those very few books where I just really really related to the main character. Oh my god, I would have needed this story so bad when I was younger. Just this whole spiel of like having so many crushes but never really acting on them and also kind of not really wanting to act on them. Just kind of like getting so used to just having these constant unrequited crushes and then sometimes you're just like that's just the way it is and then sometimes you're like I hate everything, why am I like this, why does nobody like me? I, um, I, I don't know, I feel like this book was another book that just really 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 validated my teen experience even like 10 years later. This is also a book that has some like friendship piece struggles in there. I really like that the main character is not always, oh my god, I love my friends and they are the best friends. Well, she is like that. But then she does end up being like jealous of someone. I hate when YA books act like friendships are like always perfect and you like, not even fighting. It's not about the fighting. It's about the thoughts you have. And I said this before, maybe I was like a bad person. Maybe I am a bad person. But I definitely was and still am sometimes like jealous of the amazing things that my friends have or do or whatever. That doesn't mean that I'm not happy for them. It just means that I'm human. I don't experience it much anymore these days because I'm just such an emotional person so I just get happy whenever my friends experience great things. But as a teen, I would just constantly feel like, oh my god, they get all of these great things and I don't get any of these great things. And like this girl just had like her third boyfriend and I still just had like that one week relationship that really sucked. <laughs> It made me feel so valid in, in these experiences and in these thoughts, like these thoughts especially. I just, it was the first time I read about a girl loving her friends and loving her so much, wanting to support them while having these thoughts. Like you can have these thoughts and still love your friends, okay? Just, oh my god. And finally I have Georgia Peaches and Other Forbidden Fruit by J. Robin Brown. Now. I could put a lot of queer books on this list, like there's so many queer books that I would love to give to my younger self. But I read this pretty recently and I really related to the love interests experience. I just like what we got from how she felt and like the way her feelings kind of developed, I just really found myself relating to that. I honestly feel like you could have put a lot of queer books into my teenage years and I probably still would not have caught up on being queer. I don't really see myself even with the help of like books and everything kind of catching up on that because I was such a boy crush kind of girl. I would just like, I would be obsessed with guys. I think I was like so, and not in a heteronormative way or anything like that, just in a me way. <laughs> I would just be so focused on them that I I probably would have just had to like open my eyes and look around me and be like, oh, oh, oh shit, I think I might like girls too. But I was just so focused on, on that from my very own heart that I don't think even a book would have helped me see that I actually like girls too. But still, this is one of the books that I think I really would have benefited from. As I said, I just think that the love interest experience is something that I could really relate to. But then also, I guess, you know, the main character's experience and how she kind of 
lives her queerness and how open she is about it. Not in this whole novel, but in general. She's so sure of it and she just normally just lives it. And I think even if at the time when I would have read it as a teen, I wouldn't have realized what was going on. I think in the later parts, like in my early 20s, this book just in the back of my mind would have helped me realizing things and then being immediately like proud and sure of them instead of being like a little bit freaked out by it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I feel like even if it wouldn't have helped me back then, help me. I was I was doing fine. I just really love dudes, okay? Um uh even if it wouldn't like actively help me realize anything then, let's let's say it like that. I definitely think that you know, later on when the thoughts were kind of coming naturally, then I would have been able to look back at this book. But yeah, as I said, like there's so many queer books I could put on this list just for like subconsciously that thought kind of sinking in slowly would have been great, but it's not what happened and I'm I'm fine. I would absolutely love to hear some of the books that you would love to give to your younger self. Like what is that one book that you read and just wish you could have like thrown into a time machine and just, you know, it would have arrived at your younger self's doorstep. Absolutely love to hear what book that would be for you and why that is. And yeah, these were my top five books for my younger self. I make new videos every Wednesday and Sunday with occasional reviews on Friday. So click subscribe to never miss anything and hit the little bell so you get notified as well. And thank you so, so much for watching. I guess I'll see you soon. Bye.